Hello and welcome to the show. This is Everything Under the Sun. My name is Ty. Hope all of you are treating yourselves well this week and doing the best you can for yourselves. I, it's been it's been kind of a crazy week. I mean, there's been so much happening in the world. I hope all of you are doing the best to take care of your mental space and take care of those around you. It's been you know I guess there's just so much going on, but you know it, it's been a past few weeks have been just I guess like a few weeks of just like reflection and and rediscovery and re-understanding in uh, a lot of things within myself and that's also led to a lot of work externally which has been amazing and it's been fulfilling in this really really amazing way and something I've something that's been I guess uh, a big part of this whole idea or something that's been coming up more and more or that I'm focusing on is this idea of a definite chief aim and and this idea is essentially it's something more than just our goals. You know, it's like, it's something that inspires our goals. It's almost like the, the passion of something that feels like a purpose. Like, you know, like we, we spoke about that episode on purpose and it's something that's so much deeper. It's something that's meaningful. It's something that when you feel it, it, it fills you, it fills you with life, you know, and energy. And, and that's, that's your definite chief aim. And I think that we feel glimpses of this at certain times or just like hints of it at certain times. But we we don't really acknowledge it we don't accept it or we don't hold on to the acceptance of it and that holding on to the acceptance is the biggest part of the whole thing because without that we can't properly actually realize that definite chief aim because we don't believe that we can achieve it we don't we don't hold on to the realization that it's ours if we want it so the the biggest thing that i've realized that comes in the way of this definite chief aim and the realization of it or the recognition that we can have that or even start looking towards that amazing feeling of just joy and and power and understanding and and direction you know it's like there are these there's a clarity that comes when you feel like you're in the flow of something and that's really what it is it's like there there are so many people that describe this idea of flow state and many athletes may kind of resonate with this idea of a flow state but it's essentially when you know what you want you know that you have the ability to do it and then you just go it's there's no there's no overthinking there's no self-criticism of any of any kind it's kind of like you recognize your ability you know that you can have it and you just do it and you're in the state of flow where it's like everything feels great and everything is going well because you you're riding on the passion of knowing that you will have what you desire because you know that you can achieve it. So it's, it's kind of this weird thing where it's like our inner working in our external world are, you know, enmeshed in this idea of just trying to help us to realize that we can truly have what we want, but we have to know that we can have it. And this comes down to our thoughts. It comes down to the things that we're thinking in our day-to-day lives. Something that was brought to my realization, and it's something that, you know, I think... There are so many things that seem like they're simple ideas, but when we actually think about it, we're like, wow, this is this is actually something that means so much more, it has so much more power within it, if we kind of just sit and think about it for a minute. But this idea of the fact that we're always thinking, you know, like thinking is just as part of us as, as eating and breathing. You know, we can't cease to think just as we can't cease to do any of those other things. I'm sure we can stop breathing for a short period of time, but... We have to start breathing again. We can not eat for a short period of time or for a few days or whatever, but we have to start eating again. So there's there's this dynamic that exists where it's like we we're constantly in this state of thinking, but it's happening also when we're not consciously thinking about things, and that's kind of where we fall into or out of this groove with achieving our definite chief aim or even looking towards it again because you know our, our our thoughts are driving the direction in which we are moving in our lives and if our thoughts aren't in complement with our definite chief aim or the things that makes us feel really great inside then we're not going to accomplish that thing because our thoughts aren't in congruence with that the thing about thoughts and, and, and something that we can kind of imagine this as is imagine our thoughts in our mind as a garden and no matter what seeds are being planted in that garden and our seeds are the thoughts the thoughts are the seeds and as we consciously think we're constantly planting seeds but when we're not actively thinking about things 
we're allowing whatever seeds, the external world or, or whatever around us, the doubt, the criticism, we're allowing all of that to plant itself as well. And our mind doesn't discriminate. Our mind doesn't discern you know, whether or not it's going to willingly accept bad seeds or not. It's going to accept whatever you decide to plant in that garden or whatever gets planted in that garden. So we have to gain control over those thoughts because weeds will grow in that garden. The, the negative things will continue to manifest themselves and we will be curating and cultivating the growth of those weeds if we don't take active responsibility to recognize that this is our garden and we are the gardener. We are able to make the changes that we want to make and decide what we want to grow in that garden. Our lack of awareness of our thoughts or even the lack of recognition that we have power of those thoughts allows us to kind of remove ourselves from the power of you know removing that thought or removing that idea or removing you know those seeds that are starting to germinate and and form into something that's not part of what we want for ourselves and and time and time again i speak about this idea of understanding what you want understanding what you feel inside and how these situations make you feel because our feelings will tell us the most important things about ourselves and it's because it's it's the world reflecting in some kind of way the things that we truly desire. And it's not necessarily saying the world is like when we see negativity in the world, that's reflecting what we truly desire. But that feeling that you get of it not being good, that's telling you that it's not good. That reflection is telling you that what I'm seeing is not good. Another analogy that I heard was, you know, just like you hold an object in the mirror, you'll see the perfect reflection of it. If we hold negative thoughts in our minds, it, we will also see a negative reflection of that in the world around us. And it's something that, it's something that's so big. And I, I've spoken about this idea before, and I'm sure many of you resonate with that idea of when you have when you have something planned for the day, like something amazing planned for the day, and like you wake up that morning just stoked for the day, and the things throughout that day that would normally make you upset, they don't make you upset. And it's because you've you set your mindset at this place where. You're like, nothing is going to get in my way. You've planted a seed of, of strength and prosperity and happiness and joy throughout that day. And you're removing the weeds that try to hinder that growth. You're actively removing those weeds. And the world that you see around you will be more blissful, more happy. Now, when that day passes and that concert's over and the next day you're hungover and feeling miserable and thinking of all the regrets and stuff about the night before, the next day isn't going to look that great. You know, people may be happy and you may be like, why are you so happy? The sun may be too bright that day. You know, there, there, there are so many things that happens when our, our internal world is, is good or bad and, and what that looks like when we look in the world around us. Something that happened recently with me was, you know, I, I was kind of in my head about I've been a lot more reserved recently, kind of just focusing on just work that I'm doing and, and something that I feel is my definite chief aim and it makes me feel good doing it and doubt started creeping in my head started to make me feel as though other people were starting to see me in this negative way so anytime I interacted with people I was like I had this like weird kind of gloom or this kind of weird feeling as though like they thought that I was judging them or 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 vice versa that, that I thought I was being judged by them in some kind of way and it made me feel this kind of weird weird energy and I went back and I started to reflect on those feelings that I had and, and started to think, I'm like, what if I'm just making all of this up? Because I had no validation about any of the any of the information that I was feeding to myself, any of those negative seeds that I was tending to and helping to grow. You know, I, I wasn't I wasn't validly seeing any of that in my environment. So I, I actively, you know, I guess back to this metaphor, I actively paid attention to those weeds. And tried to see i was like where's the root of this what what's causing this and and i started to realize i'm like maybe i'm just i'm just making this up and i went out you know and and i started to interact in a way from a different mindset of one that was like everything is fine you know and it's like i was smiling and i was happy and the energy felt different you know and it was like there were there was no action that was different from anyone else it was just me and I realized, you know, in that moment and time and time again, I come to these realizations and we all come to these realizations time and time again of just like, wow, like this is what this really feels like. This is what this really means. This is what it really means to me. And, and we feel inspired and we start realizing more strengths that we have. 
But the thing that we have to do is hold on to those strings because those are seeds that we're planting into that garden. And we have to tend to those seeds because weeds will come in. So the biggest part of this all is recognizing that you are the gardener. Recognizing that you have the ability to plant whatever seeds you want, to grow into whatever beautiful trees and flowers that you want to cultivate the fruits and and bounty of whatever that you want it to do. But know that other seeds are going to be planted in that same garden. And it's up to you to recognize which ones aren't in favor of what you want, aren't in favor of what you desire, and the ones that are going to help to lead you there. Because as you listen to that voice more and more inside of yourself, as you start feeling those passions more and and listening to those passions and letting that guide the seeds that you want to plant in your garden, then you will have all the things that you wish to have and you realize the strength that you have in, in cultivating your garden to produce the things that you want for yourself. So the question here is, you know, not only what seeds will you plant, but what seeds will you nurture and allow to grow? Because just as we nurture a a fruit tree to cultivate beautiful fruit, we can also nurture nightshade that will ultimately poison us. So there is so much to this idea of thought and just the the power that comes along with recognizing your thoughts and, and being that gardener to tend to your own garden and plant the seeds that you want to help you reach that definite chief aim. And I know that idea of definite chief aim may be kind of abstract and just the words that it said, but... Think of it more of a passion. Think of it more as like that feeling of just infinite love, you know, that you feel sometimes like it. I, I don't know. It's, it's like there there's certain times in our lives that we get glimpses of it, where we where we get glimpses of just feeling inspired, feeling connected, feeling love. You know, it's like when I spoke about in the last episode, when you hear those words that someone speaks and it's like it touches you in a certain way, it makes you feel a certain way. That, that feeling, that is your inner self. That's, your, that's that definite chief aim. That's your purpose. That's your true nature speaking to you and wanting you to, to pay attention to it. It's literally screaming out when, when those people are saying those things that make you feel that, that feeling inside. And that's, that's what we go with. That's what guides us. That's what helps us to tend our garden. That's what helps us to plant those seeds that we want for ourselves is listening to that passion, listening to those words and planting the seeds that come from those thoughts and removing everything else that doesn't go in line with that. So, yeah, as you can tell, this wasn't an episode on desire, or I mean on morality, but that will be the episode that is coming up next week. I hope you all tend to your gardens and plant amazing and beautiful flowers and trees for yourselves and, and recognize the power and strength that you have within yourselves to do any and everything that you want. And yeah, that's all I got. If you have any ideas or thoughts or anything that you'd like to share, you can send those to everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com. You can join any of the social media pages, Instagram, everything.sunpodcast, Twitter at every sun podcast, and the Facebook group also at every sun podcast. So that is all I got. And yeah, I love you all and be well. I'll talk to you soon.